your church, he is risen. Well, you might be able to tell by the cover today is commemoration or festival, not feast, of St. Luke. And St. Luke's uh, icon shows him with a bowl because he lived his life as a living sacrifice. We won't get into it in the sermon, so I'll mention some of it now. We are all the richer because of St. Luke. St. Luke includes a lot of things about the church and what we celebrate that we take for granted. You'll notice the pyramids are red, which represent blood. He was believed to have been martyred. But it is St. Luke that provides us those three wonderful hymns in the church. The Benedictus, the Magnificat, and the Nocturnus. And only St. Luke mentions people like Lee, wee little Zacchaeus or the penitent thief on the cross, and he alone records the words of Jesus, Father, forgive them. Of course, what we know best and maybe most about Luke is that wonderful nativity, where he alone is the one that describes the shepherds in the field of life. And so today we commemorate St. Luke. Commemoration is simply like pulling open an old album of pictures you have and remembering all those people in them and all the great times you have. Today we are going to be thankful for our Savior. And we begin our praise with praise the one who breaks the darkness. Yes. 
sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. To declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. Glory to you, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your blessed Son called Luke the physician to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. Grant that the healing medicine of the gospel and the sacraments may put to flight the diseases of our souls, and with willing hearts we may ever love and serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the week. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 35th chapter. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. The waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and the highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please join me in speaking the gradual. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than the honey to my mouth. My heart overflows with a pleasing theme, and my tongue is like a pen. The epistle is from 2 Timothy. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure, endure suffering through the work of an evangelist, to fill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have loved and appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me, and gone to Thessalonica. Precious has gone to Galatia, Titus to the nation. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark, and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Pitychus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus and Trollus, also the books and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he is strongly opposed to our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise with the Alleluia verse.
That's what Jesus told the 72 who went out ahead of him. That's what he told them to say. They were to proclaim peace. For that is what our Lord wants to give us. Peace. Because that's what sin has stolen from us. Because of sin, we have strife. And we don't have peace with others. And we have separation, not peace with God. And we have doubts and not peace in our hearts. And no matter how hard we try, we cannot fix any of this. Our situation is like the dike that sprung a leak and the little Dutch boy put his finger in it. And the leak stops. Oh, we may be able to breathe easier for a while, but not long before another leak begins, and then another, and then another, and another. And not only do we run out of fingers, we know it will not be long before the whole dike gives way, and we are drowned in a flood of sin and evil. In fact, that's already happened. For when our first parents sinned in the Garden of Eden, it was not just a little leak that happened that day. It was when the whole levee came down. Sin and death poured into the world and robbed Adam and Eve of their peace. For now their hearts would be filled with doubt and condemnation as they ran and hid from God. And they blamed each other. Paradise came tumbling down, and our world tumbled down with it. The peaceful garden had become, well, what you see today, a world full of wolves. And you're not an innocent victim, and neither am I. We, too, play at being a wolf perhaps a lot more often than we care to admit devouring reputations, chewing out loved ones, burying our fangs to get what we want, laying in wait to pounce on our prey. We may bear sheep's clothing on the outside, but our thought, words, and deeds, our desires betray who we really are, don't they? Peace be with you. <clears throat> That's what we need. And so how wondrous then, when our peace did come, that night, as St. Luke the Evangelist tells us, when the angels were so filled with joy and awe that they couldn't remain silent any longer, and they raised their voices and proclaimed to the shepherds abiding in the field, watching over their flocks by night, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, what comes next? Peace, goodwill for men. Luke 2.14 For the one to reestablish our peace had come, and was now wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Or as John said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb who came to be devoured by the wolf named Satan, to be devoured in our place, to place his sinless body into the jaws and of sin and death to be chewed up for you and for me. And as we look upon him on the cross, that is what we see, the teeth marks of sin and the fangs of death. Yet from that place of strife and sacrifice came life and peace. Life and peace in the forgiveness of our sin. For in being devoured and having our sin and death devoured, Jesus has in reality devoured it. And so on the third day, we see him not devoured, but alive. And when he appears to 
to his frightened disciples at night as they are hidden behind locked doors. What are the first words to come out of his mouth? Peace be with you. You see, he knows what they need. He knows that they need their sin forgiven. To know that death has been defeated. To know that the hound of hell has been rendered toothless. And so live in peace. The peace of God. The peace which surpasses all understanding. From Philippians 4, 7. And that peace Jesus has sent here for you. For just as he sent those 72 out, so he continues to send his under-shepherds to proclaim, Peace be with you. And that's what they are sent to say. And they are also sent to give you that peace, to heal the sick of their sin through the waters of holy baptism, that you not be drowned in a flood of sin and death, but instead that your sin and death would be drowned in the flood of Jesus' blood, which washes you clean and makes lambs out of wolves. That you be the children of God, at peace with your Father who is in heaven, and at peace with one another. Jesus sent those 72 out with nothing but provided them with what they needed. And what they needed, he gave them. And so there was no money bags or knapsacks or sandals or friends to go with them, only his word. And that is what we have today. And that is enough for his word of forgiveness, his word joined together with the water and holy baptism, and his word connected with the bread and the wine of his holy supper, given to us to give us what we need most, life and peace. And even if we find ourselves surrounded by wolves, what Jesus gives, they cannot take away from us. For as we will soon say, actually next week, We'll sing Luther's great hymn, and take they our life, good babe, child, and wife. Though all these be gone, our victory has been won, the kingdom ours remaineth. For the kingdom of God has come to you in Jesus. So that we may know his peace, St. Luke wrote the gospel that bears his name, Although St. Luke was a physician of the body, Jesus called him to be a physician of his body, the church, that we may be healed. And by his word, the word of God, we are healed. What Satan destroyed, the Lord has restored. For his peace now rests upon you. For in Jesus... All your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Your salvation was paid in full, a free gift by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess together our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and the cross of fire, was crucified, died, and was be descended in hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O holy and most merciful God, you have taught us the way of your commandments. We implore you to pour out your grace into our hearts, cause us to bear fruit in us, that being ever mindful of your mercies and your laws, we may always be directed to your will and to daily increase in love towards you and in love towards one another. Enable us to resist all evil and to live in a godly life. Help us to follow the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to walk in his steps until we shall possess the kingdom that he has prepared for us in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.